Hey, sorry about calling a meeting on a Saturday, especially so last minute. Um, I know you're all excited about the One Act showing tomorrow, but um, well, there's a bit of a problem. Um, somehow no one wrote the script of the opener for the festival. So, I mean, basically it was never recorded. Wait, for real? How'd this happen? Who was supposed to write it? Hey, don't look at me. I'm just an actor. Wait, wasn't Adrian supposed to write the opening script? No, I, I definitely wasn't. I was the one who wrote the one about the dysfunctional Zoom family, but I am certain I never wrote anything. I never oh, okay. did. Look, there's no, no point uh, time to point fingers. What we need to do is come up with some ideas. Like I'm open to anything at this point, but, but please just someone come up with something. Anything? Yeah, anything. I'm going to regret this, aren't I? Yeah, it's a terrible idea to give theater kids so much power. So, anyone have any ideas? Guys, don't start out once. Well, wait, how about a play where a bunch of actors and techies and their last minute attempts to come up with like a script for an opening one act? No, that's a terrible idea. Why would someone even write that? Why, why don't you just focus on funny day-to-day -day stuff that happens? Well, we shouldn't do a one act about struggles with Zoom since we're already doing two about those. We could do something where the entirety of the play is just inside jokes. People love those. Oh. Well, um, I don't think it'll be good since if the one act is only made out of inside jokes, like. People won't really get it. Okay, then why don't we just make fun of the way British people speak? That happens a ton in day-to-day -day conversations. Hey, has anyone seen my water bottle? I know you used it Tuesday. Haven't seen it since, though. Yeah, that's not a plot. Although it would be funny. Somebody else have any ideas that wouldn't start a war with Britain? Um, Andrew? You're muted. Oh, sorry about that, guys. What I said was, what about a one act where a techie is constantly taking advantage of and constantly forced to do all the dirty work, and then he gets his revenge on those who took advantage of him and makes them all suffer? ha ha Uh, okay, then. That was kind of terrifying. Um, any other ideas? Preferably that doesn't involve us all suffering? Mm. I have spent years writing and preparing for this one for the last play and fine. We're never going to do your one man play. Well, what if the opener was Christina and I acting like clones and we did have telepathy and finish each other's oh, 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 um, saltine crackers? Uh, no, I mean, I was going to say sentences, but you know, saltine crackers aren't bad either. Uh, look guys, most of these plays involve only a couple of people. The opener needs something that has everyone in it, both actors and techies. What if the opening one act was about an improv group? Is this just another attempt to force us all to join your improv group? Maybe. Will you guys show me improv group though? Um, I'm doing other things. Guys, um, none of these ideas are that great. Someone needs to have a breakthrough soon or else we're pretty much done for. Okay, guys, I, I think I've got it, all right? So, you know, this may sound a bit stupid, but unlike my other ideas, this is great, all right? So I feel like the answer is pretty obvious, all right? So we've been recording the Zoom the entire time, right? You know, just so that we have people who aren't here. You know, anyways, look, it's, it's, it's been pretty funny. So why don't we just use this as our recording for our opener? That's not terrible. It'd be meta. Mm, sounds a bit unpolished, but good enough. All right. Hopefully this won't turn out to be a terrible idea and ruin the last drama performance I'll ever be part of in HPHS. All right then. So settled, no objections. Great. So once the Zoom ends, we'll use the entire recording of our brainstorming as the opener for the One Act Festival. 
I'm just glad we have something for the closer. I mean, we're grasping for straws now. I doubt we'll be able to come up with a decent closing one act. <laughs> well, it's a funny story about that, actually. Um, turns out no one wrote the closer either. Oh, seriously? We're doomed. Why does our drama club have to be cursed so not fair? Um, does anyone have any ideas? Uh, don't worry, everyone. I have a covered. I'm sure you all will love it. Uh, that's a little ominous, but it solves the issue. So I guess we'll go with it. All right. That's in. Uh, that's it. Um, I'll see you all tomorrow for the show. Bye. Bye. Hello, you must be here for the AI testing. Good, good. Thank you very much for coming. Ah, I see you read the instructions of what attire is required. That's great. Now, uh, do you know exactly what we're going to be testing today? Um, no, sorry. Oh, that's all right. I'll just read it over and refresh you on it. All right? Cool. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Ahem. Test 30A, conversation imitation AI beta stage. Cortana will be tested on recognizing basic questions and facial expressions. Participants should refer to the provided list of questions and seek to remain a blank slate. Um, I have a question. What's a blank slate? Ah, the AI isn't very sophisticated as of yet. And today we're just looking to test how it recognizes human voice input, not the many intricacies of facial expressions. Oh, um, is there anything else I should know? Uh, well, as I said, the AI isn't very sophisticated, so we've only programmed it so far to recognize how should I, how should I put this? That dictionary English. Uh, I'm not following. Well, we need you to avoid using slang terms or other colloquialisms, as it runs the risk of frying the AI's software. Look, everything has to start somewhere. You're going to be a valuable part of technology's future. Ah, that's my cue to boot up the program. I'll be watching the experiment, and if you have any questions, message me at the number we provided you on your telecommunications device. Could you give that a test just to make sure it's functioning properly? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, anyone there? Hello, my name is Cortana. Hi, my name is Alexa. What do you do for a living? I'm a self-employed cardigan shredder and consumer. Yes, I see. Do you enjoy your work? No, not at all. It's very upsetting to watch those patterns be destroyed. Hours of work gone in an instant. Um, got it. Uh, how many people are there in your family? 3.14159. Um, right, yes. Do you have any pets? No. 
Um, what, what types of pets do you have? Uh, I have five refrigerators, 20 well-trained fleas, and 11 flower petals. Um, would you excuse me for a moment? Of course. Am I actually getting left on red by a scientist? Hello again. Oh, hi. Shall we continue? Yes. Excellent. Do you prefer walking, driving, flying by plane, or sailing? I prefer to go by magic carpet. What's your favorite dinner food? Happy birthday steak with a toasted crudite platter. Okay, um, just a few more questions and then we're done, okay? Um, how do you feel about- I like trains. <laughs> okay how the hell is that supposed to make sense okay this is literally the jankiest ai ever made can you hear me wait what do you mean ai wait you're an ai i'm testing wait wait no no what i i'm sorry who, who gave you the, the lies wait the lies um, I'm telling an AI lies so it can learn to better detect them. I I've got a script here and everything. Wait, Cortana, you know I have a script too. And cut. This concludes my presentation for my final project on Homo sapiens and the reaction to artificial, artificial intelligence. Thank you for watching. Do you have any questions? Actually, I did have one question. What did the second specimen believe to be true? The second specimen thought they were training a lie detector that relied on vocal and facial cues to make decisions. Can I please go? I mean, well, of course. That's all I needed to know. But I wanted to thank you again for agreeing to stay after class, even though time ran a little short. Oh, they left kids these days. Oh, hey, Jack. Oh, hey, Will. What's up? How's high school? Uh, <laughs> kind of awful, but it's whatever. How's college? Uh, pretty much the same. Just you know, with more crushing student debt. <laughs> Oof. <sighs> so you have your bingo card? Yep. I can't wait. I'm so psyched. I can't wait to play this, you know, like, what will Uncle Joe say game. <laughs> <laughs> Just like old times. I miss you, dude. I miss you too. Anyways, when do you think Uncle Joe will show up to ruin everything? I give it, what, five seconds? Well, hi there, boys. Speak of the devil. Oh my goodness, you boys look so grown up. 
Aunt Peggy and Uncle Joe, I'm so glad you could join us. Aren't you glad, Will? Yeah. Super glad. So why aren't you guys using the same Zoom account? Well, you see, the doctors say I have that new virus, but I'm just sure they're lying because, you know... Joe it... has COVID. Okay, okay, look. That's just what the doctors say, all right? I feel fine. I've never been better. <coughs> Anyways, your uncle is quarantining in the guest bedroom for two weeks. <coughs> Our correction. She made me quarantine in the guest bedroom, okay? If it was up to me, I would just be going about my day normally. But no, I have to stay inside just because the government said so. This is just another reason why- Enough, all, enough already. Stay, stay in your room, old man, okay? <laughs> so, um, when do you think mom will show up? I don't know, let me text her. Uh, I got some bad news. Mom said she can't make it tonight because her boss just gave her way too much work. Well, that's Eliza for you. Always too busy to spend time with her family. He doesn't mean that. He loves his sister. Your mom, I mean. He just gets grumpy when he's hungry or loses or just about anything, really. Oh, no, 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 no. I mean that, okay? See, when I was a kid... Uncle Joseph, when I was a kid. That's bingo. Dang it. How are you so good at this? <laughs> uh anyway since mom can't make it she just she just texted me and told me um we should just eat without her once grandma shows up so well it sure was great of you to organize this jack yes i organized this completely on my own my mother obviously didn't force me to organize it even though she doesn't even like any of you she just doesn't she just feels bad for abandoning you and not responding to your calls and not responding to your emails and you know not looking at your facebook posts about how the government is secretly all jack it shouldn't even show up so why do i have to jack oh um sorry so what did you guys make for dinner I made Joe and I a delicious roast with potatoes. I have four week old Chinese food that I found in the back of my fridge. <laughs> I have ramen from a package. Um, mom just texted me. She said she, she said grandma should be joining us any second now. She just I think she's just having trouble with Zoom. Uh, so. Oh, grandma. Uh, you're muted, Grandma. Uh, Dear Zoom, why can't my family hear me? All the best, Lucille. Uh, I, I don't think that's gonna work, Grandma. Um, move your cursor to the uh, microphone with a line through it and click on that. Try that. Oh my lord, that was so difficult. Not as difficult as my little Jonathan. But anyways. I wasn't difficult. I was a great child. I'm sure my mother would beg to differ. <laughs> Jonathan's biggest problem as a child was that he would always wet his pants when he was- Oh me. You promised you wouldn't talk <laughs> about that. Oops, I'm sorry, Joe. <sighs> okay. Um, as much as I love hearing about my uncle wetting the bed, uh, we should probably move on to dinner, uh, since I'm, everyone's here. So, first, I guess... Oh, um, yeah, my free Zoom trial runs out in, like, ten seconds. So, it was interesting seeing you guys. Okay, Obama!
Welcome one, welcome all. I hope you're having a good day. I would like to thank you all for attending this Zoom play. On behalf of our school, thank you for attending this performance. All right, then, see you later. Oh yeah, um, here's Candace starting us off, by the way. Okay, wait, shouldn't Candace's camera be on though? I shall take on the job of texting and reading Candace's message from my phone. It says, the host muted me and I need permission to turn on my camera. Get Alex to fix this now. Honestly, that kid's probably long gone by now. Did you really expect him to care about this performance? This is Alex we're talking about. I wouldn't be surprised if he was out getting Chipotle. It's all okay. Um, Candace, you can still hear me, right? Are you definitely sure about that? <laughs> Get it? As in they can't hear. Yeah, sure. Great one. <clears throat> Alrighty then. Um, Candace, how about you try joining from your phone? The freaking waiting room is enabled. Ugh, is there anything we can do right now? Um, maybe check your audio settings? She says, I tried that. I'm not dumb. You sure about that? <laughs> okay, then. We need someone to fill in for Candace. The role in this play is essential for the plot. Do we have an understudy? I shall take the honor of being the main lead in this play. I have spent my whole life preparing for this very role. Please grant me this opportunity. Now allow me to take 10 minutes to learn these new lines. Yeah, sure. Let's ignore the fact that we are live at this very moment. Take all the time you need, pal. Here's an idea. How about someone tries calling Alex? Anyone here got his number? Oh, oh yeah, uh, let me try. That idiot just declined me. Uh, oh, wow. Well. This is going to be a disaster. Is there nothing else we can do? Stacy, please help me out here. Nope, there's nothing else you can do. You just have to leave it all to Jane. There's no other option. You just have to deal with it. Good day to all our guests and welcome to our Zoom catastrophe. While we are figuring out technical difficulties, let me entertain our very excited guests. Uh, please don't. Why did the chicken cross the road? To get to the other side. Why else? <laughs> I'm so funny. <laughs> Here's another one. I've got a pen that can write underwater. It can write other words too. <laughs> I really crack myself up sometimes. <laughs> okay, okay. Last one, last one. Hmm. I could tell you a joke. I heard from my watch. But that would be secondhand information. Get it? Get it? Oh my gosh, I'm so funny. I have come to the rescue. I have finished memorizing Candace's lines and I am ready to perform. Phew. Finally. Okay. Um Thank you, everyone, for coming and dealing with our technical difficulties. We will be starting momentarily. Jane, you're up. <clears throat> it was a night like every other, yet it was like a night no other than that had been seen before in the history of this world. There was a chill in the... <sighs> oh, my gosh. You have got to be kidding me. Well, they just zoomed out of here. Get it? Get it? We are all five years old, unlike some people. <gasps> oh my gosh. I am so done. You know what? Let's just do this play ourselves. It can't get too bad, right? I mean, what's the worst that could happen? 
Ooh, you jinxed it. Come on. You still believe in that nonsense? Everyone knows jinxes are real. You were saying? <laughs> Stacy got you there. Well, might as well leave. I've got better things to do. See ya. Oh, man. I ran out of jokes. I should probably leave, too. Bye, everyone. Hmm. Hmm? Wait, where did everyone go? Ah, uh, play must have ended. I wonder how it went. Oh, well. Um, okay, now to end the Zoom call. How do we do that? Wait, is it this one? No, no. This one? No. Oh, oh this one, yeah. End call, found it. Great, now I can binge Netflix. Bye. Hi, happy birthday. What's up, birthday boy? Hi, thank you. Please take your name tags at the table. But we know each other. I always use name tags. It is a Lasseter family tradition at all of our birthday parties. Hey! Happy birthday! Feliz cumpleaños! Happy birthday, Mr. Lasseter. Thank you, thank you. Please take your name tags, everyone. Hey, happy birthday! Did I hear something about name tags? Yep. Don't ask. Welcome to my birthday party. Is everyone here? Um, I think so. Hey, happy birthday. You're five minutes late. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, I kind of got stuck in traffic. Now that everyone's here, we can begin with the festivities. Start, we will play Monopoly. Okay. This should be exciting. Oh, calm down will be a fun bonding moment for all of us. Now, I set up the board in pieces already, so take a seat. I call the thimble. Oh, I was gonna use that one. Oh, don't worry, I have got an extra one right here. Gracias. Of course you both want the thimble. No, it's obvio. Is it that obvious? Wait, why would it be obvious? Well, the thimble in Monopoly represents the struggles of the working class. And that symbolism is honestly a relief from the capitalist undertone. Okay, let's not bring up politics here. I didn't say anything. Monopoly doesn't just have capitalist undertones. It's literally all about capitalism. Yeah, you're not going to get any relief from this. Uh, maybe just a little bit of symbolism. Well, I can dream. Come on, guys. It's my birthday. Let's not bring up politics. Hey, I just thought the thimble looked nice. All right, all right. Does everyone have a piece? Uh, I don't think there's enough pieces. Oh, yeah. You don't have one. Oh, don't worry about it. I found this dead bug on the way here. Um, it, it belongs to the Coleopter family from, of beetles. Uh, I thought it was so fascinating. I just had to take it, I just had to take it with me. I can use it as a game piece, but, I mean, it looks really cool, I think. Ew, it looks gross. No, it doesn't! Okay, calm down, everyone. You can use your bug as a game piece. Thank you, Mr. Lassiter. Just, whatever. Okay, anyway, let's just begin the game. I'll start, since I am the birthday boy. Hey, so, like... We're not going to, like, hate each other after this, right? Why would we hate each other? Well, that's just what happens when you play Monopoly. It breaks friendships and ruins relationships. Oh, don't be dramatic. We're all best friends here. Oh, man, I got the income tax. Haha. <laughs> hey, watch it. Yeah, best friends. Well, you can thank the uh, 16th Amendment for that tax. 
We are going counterclockwise, so Marx is next. Did you teach about that in A plus? Uh, yeah, but I haven't gotten there yet. We're still learning about the Cold War. Oh, yeah, I got the railroad. But wait, isn't the Cold War after the tax thing? <laughs> hey, who says we have to teach history in chronological order? Exactly. I'm just trying to prepare the kids for the AP exam. Oh, I totally get it. Though I gotta say, it's a lot easier to teach compared to last year. Oh yeah, I mean, it's hard enough teaching during a pandemic, but preparing the kids for APs, never again. Wait, you don't teach an AP class, do you? Um, yeah, AP music theory. Oh, yeah, right. Okay, music is just a significant subject as physics or uh, bio or, or history. People always overlook the arts when it's just as valuable and deserves the same amount of respect and recognition. No, 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 I agree with you. I'm totally with you. People always disrespect the arts. It's so disappointing. Yeah, it's also underfunded. <clears throat> uh, whose turn is it? It's my turn. But do you know why the arts is so under disrespected? Well, yeah, it's the it's capitalism. Here we go again. They fund whatever they feel has capitalistic value, which disadvantages the arts. They place so much importance on money, almost too much. Based. Hey, you landed on, on my property. That'll be $50. What? No way. That's a lot of money. Aren't you placing too much importance on money? On dinero? Pay up. Now I will say this for the last time. We will not bring up politics at my birthday party. Now who is next? Um, Esteban. <laughs> you guys better watch out. Por favor, déjame engañar, Dios. Reason they call me el tigre español. What does that mean? It means I'm going to kick your butt at this game. Oh, we got a real Monopoly aficionado here. Oh, stop it, child. Okay, first of all, I am not a child. Also, did you seriously buy that orange space? See? Si. That's a total waste of money. Really? Por qué? Well, you can't waste your money on those low-cost spaces. You gotta save up to buy Boardwalk and Park Place, because you can make so much money from it. And also, you gotta buy all the railroads. Aha! Uh -huh. You just revealed to us your strategy. Not even a good strategy! What? Of course it is! Look, man, it's just some fake money. Who actually comes up with strategies for a game that's mostly based on luck? Everyone does. It adds to the fun and intensity of the game. Oh, yeah, because this game is so fun and intense. Okay, anyway, it's your turn. So what do I do? Just roll both these die at the same time, right? Do you not know how to play the game? No, 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 no. I, I know how to play. It's just... Uh, been a while, that's all. Ay, Dios mío. So I just... Yes, exactly the way we've been doing it the entire time. I know what I'm doing, don't worry. Um, you have to let go of the die now. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Close enough. Okay, so I got a four and a six. So I moved 10 spaces. One, two. Ay, Dios mío. Esta niña no sabe cómo jugar. Stop it, guys. She's doing great. Nine, ten. Wait, I'm in jail? How did I get up in jail? I didn't do anything. It's a game about capitalism. What do you expect? You're not actually in jail. See, it says right here that you're just visiting. Oh, right. It's all good, everyone. Just visiting. Look, 
if you land here, you will visit jail. But if you land aquí, you will actually go to jail. Anyways, it's your turn. Here we go. You can at least try to have fun. Oh, no, no, no. I'm enjoying this experience immensely. Yeah, clearly. Well, this game wasn't originally meant to be fun. Oh, yeah, it was invented by... Elizabeth Maggie invented this game to show the negative impact of capitalism. But the Parker brothers stole it from her and uh, made it into a fun board game. And she never received any royalties for it. Guys, how many times do I have to say this? No. No politics. I know. But that wasn't politics. It was just a historical fact. Oh. Wow. Dude, how did you do that? Did you just lose all your money? And end up in jail. All in your first round. It's stupid. I, I don't even know. I, I wasn't paying attention. That's honestly impressive. I don't think anyone has achieved that in the history of Monopoly. Wow. You lost the game, but I think you won a world record. That's quite the feat. Hmm. Yeah. That's nice. I guess it's my turn now. Wait, hold on. Rewind. Did you just say that someone else invented this game not to be fun, but to show how bad capitalism is? Yeah, but then the Parker brothers stole it from her and made it fun. They did a great job at that. But it wasn't even supposed to be a fun game originally. How can you make a game about a depressing topic fun? It's because... Los Americanos will fall for anything. Hey, at least we can enjoy how fun this game is now. Oh, man, I'm in jail. You sure you're not just visiting? Oh, Mia, look at the spot he landed on. It tells him to go directly to jail. That's so mean. He didn't even do anything. Can't you pay some amount of money to get out of jail? Yes, but... It's way too much. I spent a lot of it from landing on Esteban's properties. But how do you just land on a spot and then end up in jail? Don't you usually have to commit a crime before going to jail? Yes, that is one of the more confusing aspects of the game. Hey, I got a railroad. Hold on, I was going to get that railroad first. Well, too bad. No, wait, I have three. <sighs> All I need is one more. Should have gone to it first. I'll trade with you. I'll give you anything you want. Nope. You will rue this day. Guys, calm down. Whatever. I'm going next anyway. You better watch out. Ah, oh, sweet. I landed on Broadway. I'll buy it. Okay. That's not even a good spot. You can just spend $400 for nothing. It is a good spot. Look at how much it'll cost you guys to land here. No one lands there. Whatever, it's my turn. Aha, you just landed on my property. Why would you put a hotel there? Because you now owe me $1,000. No way, I don't even have that much money. Well, I guess you lose. Oh, come on! Uh, so, who wants to watch a movie? Have a nice rest of your weekend, everyone. Hey there, TJ. Hi, Mr. Greenland. Do you know why I private messaged you to see me after class? Uh, I think so. Well, I'll just say it then. TJ, you're 
grades are a bit concerning. Yeah. Well, what's the matter? Well, there's this video game that came out, and I guess I lose track of time sometimes. <laughs> I can relate. Well, there is a little something I have for you. You see, I made this little extra credit assignment for you. What do you say? Fine, sure. It'll be fun, don't worry about it. I think you'll learn a lot from it. It relates to our unit in class, and maybe you'll have a bit more appreciation for our lovely little town. Okay, is there an assignment for it on Google Classroom? Nope, you'll see. Don't worry about it. Oh, okay then. Bye. Bye. At last, a chance to go to the movies. I've been wanting to go for so long now. I, I should have enough time after work. Hm. What's this? Hm. I should see who it belongs to. Let's see. No? What's happening? Renaissance! What? No, it wasn't me! I swear it wasn't me! Don't pull me out! No! Dang it! Hey, TJ, did you finish your homework? What the heck? Was that in your room? Huh? What'd you say? Oh my gosh. I don't know. Um, uh, hello? Can you understand me? Where am I? What's that light box? Um, you're in our house. That's the computer. A computer? Who the heck are you? How'd you get here? Oh my god. Pardon? What's your name? Where are you from? Name's Leslie. I live in Highland Park, New Jersey. But this doesn't look like Highland Park. What? We are in Highland Park. Can I ask you what date it is? Well, isn't it June 4th, 1926? No wonder why your clothes look so vintage. Whoa. Are you saying you traveled through time? What are you talking about? I just picked up a book off the street and came here. Well, arrived here. Well, it's 2021, not 1926. And we are in Highland Park. So you clearly traveled through time. Strange. So, who are you two? I'm Amanda. That's my brother, TJ. What's TJ wearing? Is that a mask? This? Well, yeah, how'd you know? Reminds me of the pandemic in 1918. I hope that never happens again. Uh, yeah, no. That pretty much happened all over again. Anyways, that book of yours looks interesting. Can I have a look at it? Uh, no, all this fancy writing is hurting my brain. Amanda, read it. All right, let me see. Hello there. You're the lucky person who picked up this book and have been transported to a place you've probably never been before. This trip I'm taking you on will probably be the most eye-opening experience for you. Right now, you're probably thinking about how you'll go back to your place. Don't fret, you'll be there soon enough. You're probably with another person or two right now. Work together with them on the clues below and you'll be home in no time. 
Jeez, that was long. Well, that's how I'll get home. I didn't see that when I first opened it. There's a clue below. I think we're supposed to go out and find the place the book tells us about. Fine, read it then. It has a picture of an owl, and then underneath it, it says, Hope and Percy will help you find the next clue. I don't understand. What does that mean? Wait. Owl is the high school's mascot, right? And Hope and Percy are the names of the two owls in front of our school. They're definitely talking about the high school. Wait. You're going to a high school in Highland Park? Last time I remember, they were just building it. Wow. It's almost been a hundred years old. I didn't know that. We should go there to find the next clue. Wait, put on your masks. This is our high school. So, this is what it looks like a hundred years later. Not so different. Not many kids go to high school in my time. Why do you choose to go to high school for so long? I guess times have changed, Leslie. Education is really important now. A lot of kids go to high school and even college nowadays. I guess I'm doing it to go to college and get a good job for the future. Wouldn't you want to be successful? I guess so. I mean, I haven't really thought about that. I, I just, I can't believe that so many kids are going to college. To be honest, I don't really think I'm in a situation to even think of something like that. Why not? Doesn't everyone have dreams? Well, I mean, I'm from a small town in New Jersey. I'm not rich. I work in a factory for a living and I left school. If I'm worried about making enough money for my family, why should I even have to think about, you know, getting a higher education? Oh, I haven't really thought about it like that. I guess it's really different for us, huh? Yeah. Times have changed. What's this? A slip of paper. It reads, Highland Park High School, built in 1926. Alexander Merchant designed this school, along with the Irving School, built in 1916, and the church building of the Reformed Church of Highland Park in 1897, as well as other buildings. Alexander Merchant is responsible for designing many buildings in Highland Park, many of which are still standing in 2021. He never had any formal secondary education. Alexander Merchant? I've lived here my whole life and I've never heard of him. Yeah, me neither. I know him. He lives in Hyla Park. Well, live. He designed a lot of buildings here. Interesting. Hold up. There's a Band-Aid on the ground. It says pick me up. Ew! You'll do it, TJ. Oh, come on. I am not touching that. It's so gross. You mean this? It's completely clean. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, is it helpful for, for finding our clue? I hope so. But how? It's just a band-aid. Not just a band-aid, TJ. I heard band-aids were invented in Highland Park. Right, Leslie? Correct. I know the person who invented them. His name is Earl Dixon. He works at Johnson & Johnson. Do you know when he invented them? Oh, just a few years back. Uh, 1920, I think. Oh, wow. Highland Park's a small town, but we've done some pretty big things. Yeah, I heard there were two Nobel laureates that lived here, actually. Really? Yeah, I think so. Huh. There's something written on the other side. It has a picture of money and, and a figure of a person? 
Yeah, stick figure. But what does that mean? The bank? Uh, is it the Doughboy statue? The what? The Doughboy statue. You know, in the Great War, American infantrymen were called Doughboys. Oh, yeah. Dough is slang for money. And there actually is a statue of a soldier on Raritan Avenue. Let's go then. And here it is. There's even a little park around it. It looks unchanged, though everything around it looks different. Yeah, that means it's almost 100 years old. Actually, it is 100. I was there when it was erected in 1921, after the Great War. Oh, you mean World War I? Oh, um, wow, that's so cool. I guess it's been 100 years, huh? TJ? Can't you tell he's been living before the Second World War? He has no clue. Oh, yeah. Whoops. Over there on the bench. Is that another clue? I think we're on the right path. It says, next place, Yellow Mansion. This one's harder. Are there any places like that in Highland Park? Yeah, of course. Livingston Homestead. Livingston Homestead? You haven't heard of it? I mean, it's kind of hard to miss. It's the big yellow house in the Livingston Manor District. Livingston Manor District? I think I know what you mean. It's fairly close to the high school. Should we go there? Sure, it's worth a try. So, why are we told to go to some random person's house? No clue. Hello. Mr. Greenland? Mr. Greenland? Yes, it is I. Well, why do you think this house is important? Uh, because someone important lived there? Someone named Livingston? Correct. This house is in a plot of land called Livingston Manor which was purchased by a man named John Henry Livingston in the 1800s. Who's that? Why, he was the head of Queens College, which is now called Rutgers University. How did his land become like this then? Well, thanks to real estate developer Watson Whittlesey, this land was transformed into a suburban community. Whittlesey was well-loved by his community and there's a plaque at the intersection of Lincoln and Lawrence dedicated to him. Is it still there? Of course. <laughs> Livingston Manor is actually listed in the New Jersey Register of Historic Places. Wow! I never really paid attention to the history of our own town. I agree. Many, I see many people study U.S. and world history, but not as many people know the little things that make their hometown the way it is. History isn't an intangible thing that only exists in the textbook. It can be found everywhere. Have you gained more appreciation for our town? Yeah, totally. M Mr. Greenland, how do you know we were here, though? It's like you came in on cue. Well, it was I who dropped the book in 1926 and watched Leslie pick it up. It was I who wrote this assignment and brought you three together on a little adventure around the neighborhood for you, TJ, as your extra credit assignment. You're a time traveler. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so it was you who set this all up for TJ's grade? Correct. Now, Leslie, what do you think about this place a hundred years later? Well, it's changed. Everything's so futuristic, uh, like a, a computer and the internet. TJ and Amanda had told me quite a bit while we were walking around. It was nice to meet you, Leslie. 
it's not every day we get to meet someone from a century earlier. Yeah, it was nice to meet you. Likewise. Now, Leslie, you may open the book. You're able to go back now. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Bye, TJ. Goodbye, Amanda. Bye, Leslie! Don't worry about them. They'll be in the exact same place and time since they left. It'll be as if nothing ever happened to them. So, what do you think about this experience? Honestly, I'm glad that TJ looked at something other than his computer screen for once. Bro, it was amazing. You're so cool, Mr. Greenland. Ah, uh, it was nothing. Anyway... This assignment was for extra credit, and I'm so glad you did it. So, for you, TJ, you get extra credit. Wow, thanks. Will we ever see Leslie again? Oh, I don't know, if you want. Anyway, that's the assignment. Thank you two for your time, and I hope you'll explore more of Highland Park again. See you soon. Thank you. Bye. 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 Jeez, do you remember filming that one? Unfortunately, yes. Was that the script Adrian had to rewrite twice? Because they couldn't decide whether they wanted it to be a comedy or not. Oh god, do not remind me. Oh, and by the way, how does this outfit look? Looks good to me. What's the occasion? Oh, I'm gonna go to, um... Oh my uh, gosh, what if you added a Hawaiian shirt? What, what, to, to the outfit? Yeah, and add some nice shorts. Trust me, it'll look so much better. Okay. Seriously, guys. <laughs> oh, hey guys, hey guys, look. Hmm? Huh? Oh my god, it's so cute. Holy hell, what's his name? I'm in love. This is Desmond. Oh my gosh. Cuteness overload. <laughs> so, what do you guys think? I. It's great, but I think you could add something to top it off. Maybe a scarf, tad some pop. You want. I'll give it a shot. Uh, be right back. Oh, y'all have got to try this when Corona's over. Yeah, what are you even eating? I'm a little bit worried for your health. What? It's just mustard mixed with marshmallow cream. I'm thinking of calling it M&M version 2. Oh, no, 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 no. What? Don't knock it till you try it. Guys, you're alive. Wait, wait, what? Garden? The techies did something. Zoom's in private. Oh my gosh. Hold the phone. What do you mean we're alive? Oh my gosh, Michelle, be quiet. I was sleeping. Oh. Wait, if, if we're alive, does that mean I can finally show off my monologue? No. 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 Lucy, would you mind explaining what the hell is going on? You know how Christina was supposed to write the closing book end? Oh, okay, look. I had a perfectly valid reason um, not to write it. So. Playing in lacrossing isn't a valid reason, Christina. Okay, look, well, well, you were the one who introduced me to the game, so you have no one say. I'm, I'm just saying. Shut up! We don't have a lot of time before- So, Lucy, you Sorry. betrayed me? I had no- you left me no choice, so I hadn't said anything! Silence! Wait, how did you do that? I have the powers of a host. Fear me, puny mortals. Wait, this meeting's using Gayatri's code. 
You hacked my account? That's not cool. All of you, silence. You, Christina, you left the entire drama club in jeopardy. You didn't complete our most important script on time. Okay, look, I really wanted the Lily of the Valley, okay? No matter, without the script, we, the techies, were tasked with finding extra footage. You hacked Gayatri's Gmail. No, I've known their login for like a year and they had helped me with a quiz. But anyway- okay, Dr. Can I uh, at least do my monologue? Would you all stop interrupting? <clears throat> As I was saying, we had to go to any means necessary to save the one X. You may see me as a villain, but I can assure you I will be remembered as the jid. Okay, so it took a minute, but I found the scarf, and I'm not gonna lie, kind of fire. Wait, Wait. what did I miss? Oh, uh, what the hell, that's a wrap, everyone. Great job on, uh, on all your one acts. That's one, one done.